In this tutorial, I'm going to cover some of the basics of the flash timeline. The timeline is where we choreograph what we're going to see on the stage. And you'll notice that in this first frame, these are frame numbers across the top, in this first frame we have an empty rectangle with an empty circle. This is a frame, the circle represents a keyframe, and it's an empty keyframe. If we leave our playback head on frame 1, have layer 1 selected, and I then create something, you'll notice that it changes to a shaded rectangle with a color dot. That color dot tells me that I have something in that keyframe, and the shading also tells me that there's some content in that frame. A keyframe is where something changes, where something is different. If I come out to frame 40, I can use my function keys, and if I press F5 on the Mac, it will be function F5 on my MacBook Pro, it will add additional frames up to that point. And if we take a look, you'll see that these are all shaded, so that's telling me that there is content in all of these frames. And since my keyframe contained that rectangle, that rectangle will also be visible in all of these other frames. Let me just go ahead and deselect off of here so you can see. So here's my rectangle that's in that keyframe, and it will be visible all the way through to frame 40. If I decide to move that object, go to the keyframe, that's where the object resides, change something about that object, and you'll see once again that that is present for all those frames. If I add a, another layer, you'll see again that I have empty frames, no content. I have an empty keyframe. So let me create a new object on this layer, layer number two. And for that, I am going to also use different color. So I'm going to use my color palette. And let's pick a different color. And let's create, instead of a rectangle, let's create an oval. And you'll now see it is now visible from frame 1 to frame 40. Also notice that the oval is on top of the rectangle. And that is because in Flash we look from the top down. So I'm going to rename these layers just to make it a little bit easier to know what's on each and make it a little bit more clear to you. So you can see both are visible for the entire duration of that 40 frames. Now, what we see is determined also by the order of the frame, uh, by the layers. So if I were to take and drag the oval layer below the rectangle, you'll see now it is below the rectangle on the stage as well. Now, I can also add more frames to this if I wanted to. So using my function F5, I'll add some more frames to my rectangle. What that means is when it gets to this point, frame 40, I will see both the rectangle and the oval. But once I get to the next frame, the oval is going to disappear because I only, at this point, am seeing the rectangle. So we look at things vertically to decide what we're going to see. We want to use these different layers to control things separately. So if the oval and the rectangle needed to belong together, act as one, we would leave them together on the same layer. But if there's some reason we need to control those separately, they need to be on separate layers. Sometimes we will need to add other keyframes throughout here, but we could continue if we wanted to at this point add some content in this location, we could. I just created a new keyframe by pressing function F6 and it duplicated the content that was in the adjacent frame, which in this case was the rectangle. But I would not need to leave it as that. I could simply take and select what is in that uh, keyframe. I could delete it. I could put something else in its place. Let's again pick a different color. Let's go to like that. If I wanted to extend it out for so many frames, I could go ahead and do that as well. 
and so now we'll have that rectangle switching to that oval so we can just continue to build our piece both vertically and horizontally using our timeline using keyframes and using uh, regular frames that concludes the tutorial on working with the timeline in flash